in ring you must have heard this term in last few days prompt engineering is a process where you guide generative ai the gen ai models to generate various type of outputs so even though gen ai try to mimic human but if you are able to formulate and articulate your question properly and give those as prompt to those model you will get correct answers so that is the prompt engineering ability to ask question to those models so that you get correct output so <clears throat> what do you require to become a prompt engineer according to me you should have linguistic proficiency creative writing ai and nlp knowledge problem solving and critical thinking and the most important thing is knowing what is ethical because you should be aware of the questions what you are asking and make sure that there is no biases are coming in those outputs or if it comes you discard those biases so if i sum up prompt engineering is all about asking the right set of question to those large language model so that you can get output as per your desire now we can expand this thing so that we can understand something more here we have heard of generative ai and large language model which have been trained on vast set of data but let's say if you are running a marketing group or a banking or hr so in all those things you are bothered about getting the output which suits your organization so for that it is essential that you are able to ask the relevant questions which suits and give the answer as per your requirement so let's say if a marketing team wanted to use generative ai model so it will want to ask questions like you know how do i create a campaign which type of audience i should select for or target for but let's say if you are in a bank you may be asking different type of questions which are the customer who uh, may be looking for growth or where loan will not become npa and similarly now you can think of it if you are in a other form so you will ask the question accordingly now important thing is here is that uh, with prompt engineering it's not only that you ask something and get the output in text you get output as a image that is dali 2 so that is with the help of dali 2 you are able to get the output as a image but the one more other development which has happened is now we have multi model gen ai so meta has come with the multi model gen ai so what it means in this you get the output as a text at the image video audio or the images or video where you can measure the depth you can see the depth of that and uh, similarly what they say is that based on the infrared based thermal radiation something can come out or it will be containing initial measurement unit and in going forward they are planning to in- include our the way we smell the haptic the brain fmri so whole thing is the output you will get will be a immersive output it means uh, if you ask that image you know, and you have shown the image of a lion or a bird and ask what will be the sound of that it will show that it will it, it will produce those type of sound or vice versa if you input that in a prompt that sound and ask it belongs to which animal maybe it will give a answer that it belong to lion or let's say dog whatever it is 
and similarly as is said that uh, because now the, it's a multi modal thing so it includes the depth and various other things so it's they can convert those 2d images into 3d so that is the potential of that so that with prompt engineering if you are able to use this properly on the gen ai model you will able to generate total immersive videos uh, where you know it's a 3d videos where you know you feel like uh, that objects which is moving and let's say if it is moving away from you 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 can feel it out that it is moving away from you and if let's say if there is a singer who is singing in that uh, video so what happens in the real situation when you are near the singer when you are near the stage the music is very loud but if you move away from the stage and from that singer you hear less something similar those type of outputs will get generated here so those uh, when you move away from those you know those videos in that you will feel like that music is fading down so yeah this is the potential of uh, uh, generative ai and when it is properly used in a multi model gen ai model with prompt engineering now some other concepts are also important how uh, those uh, various these models have come out and how they work so let me just give a very quick example here we all have heard of chat gpt and there are many others model have come up uh, which generate as i said mainly the text or image or video that's what we are seeing but what you have to consider let's say there are uh, when these models were getting trained so uh, in that models lot of data was provided and how it is different from the normal search engine in the normal search engine today there are two phases when you ask something so it gathers the data and then it provide the input but in this large language model the first phase that is the data gathering phase has already happened and that's why it's called pre trained model and that part was very much scalable so it has been uh, trained with lot of data so you get a ready made a thing where data is already being given and model has been trained so just understand that is a difference between a search engine and this uh, pre trained model in the search engine i said there are two phases data gathering phase and user interface part but here it's only one thing because the pre training has already happened and that in a very scalable way so uh, now when you ask the question uh, you get a answer and with prompt engineering you the more accurately you define the questions the better responses you will get uh, in prompt engineering there are many other things which are important uh, which is something like reinforcement learning from human feedback which is how the those models were trained and uh, there are something like random seed repetition penalty stopping criteria stop sequence minimum and maximum token decoding greedy decoding temperature top p top k you know if you it's all the probability models are there so if you change the value of the top p or top k at temperature it start giving you more creative answer let's say so let's take example here suppose when this model was trained and in that database there were total 100 sentences in which 75 sentences said that the sky is blue and 10 20 sentences said the sky is red and 5 sentences said sky is green so if you set the parameters those temperature and top p and top k parameter at a deterministic level means value of 0 and you ask the sky is it will tell the sky is blue because that is what is the uh, it has been trained and where 75 sentences were there but now if you change the value of these parameters the temperature the top p and top k maybe first it will say the sky is red after that it may say the sky is green 
and if you change the value too much then it may say that sky is black now remember this type of sentence was never there in its uh, pre uh, training model but how it is able to do that because it identified the when you are saying the sky is and after that whatever the word is coming belongs to color and it knows that black is also a color so it's able to produce that type of output and that's why we say that yeah it is a generating or creating something new to me the gen ai is all about a systematic way of generating randomness yeah that's what my definition is but having said that what is important to know is that with gen ai and with the prompt engineering and where i said the skills what you require with the linguistic proficiency your critical thinking analytical thinking a basic knowledge of ai and nlp and uh, knowing what is ethical or not you can fine tune and get the correct responses as per your organization need there are various other applications of uh, generative ai model which is like variation uh, uh, auto encoders gan diffusion model transformer and nerf uh, nerf is uh, according to me we need to just quickly consider which is neural radiance field and it helps in converting a 2d picture into 3d all other things are also important if you want to read more about this you can go to my website www.raktensingh.com if you like that video please uh, subscribe to my channel and you can write in the comment box the topics on which i should be creating more videos like that